Welcome to UTRGV Radio News. I'm Natalie Sarate. And I'm Hannah Lopez. Starting off our newscast today, UTRGV Radio's Samantha Garza starts us off this morning with developing news on the Fort Worth police shooting. Earlier this month, Tatiana Jefferson, a black female, was shot and killed in her home by Aaron Dean, a white Fort Worth police officer. According to the Fort Worth Police Department, the former police officer was charged with murder on Monday after resigning from his position. UTRGV Theater Performance freshman Rocio Barrera voices her concerns about the proximity of the events. If it can happen like in small towns, like in other states, I'm pretty sure it can happen here. I mean, you never know. You don't know. It's just scary. It's very scary because we're supposed to be like relying on them and like they're supposed to keep us safe. And when stuff like that happens, it really just like, I guess, creates doubts. Edinburgh Chief of Police Cesar Torres tells UTRGV Radio that the police department is here to help the community. It's important that our citizens realize that we're not there to hurt people, we're there to help people. Torres says residents should remain vigilant and report any irregular behaviors. Dean was arraigned and released on a $200,000 bill. This is Samantha Garza for UTRGV Radio News. Our very own Jerry Galindo tells us how the Brownsville campus is dealing with a certain species that has some students concerned. Last week, concerns on campus rose after a video was uploaded depicting a snake outside the Brownsville Library. This is not the first time students at UTRGV encounter snakes. Last April, a snake was spotted outside the same library, and in May, once again, spotted in the Brownsville Main Building. UTRGV Radio sat down with biology professor Dr. Frederick Zayden to understand how these reptiles populated the campus. You have some that are very tolerant to disturbance. Um, others, not so much. So you go to an area which has snakes and you build, and excluding the ones you plow over and, and kill during that process, um, if they're fairly disturbance tolerant, they will persist in that environment. Um, so those are most likely the ones that we have here. Since UTRGV in Brownsville is built out on the Osaka, Dr. Zayden tells UTRGV Radio that the snakes being seen around campus are water snakes and are not a danger to students. It is nothing to worry about. See the snake, let it pass, walk around it. You're more of a danger to the snake than the snake is to you. So just admire it being there and just kind of walk on because we, we really need the snakes and other wild critters on our campuses and in our backyards. Education sophomore Victoria Jaramillo explains how she feels about the snakes on campus. I don't think I would be scared so long as like, they don't bother me. They're, so long as they're not like a danger, I wouldn't be afraid or right. I wouldn't be concerned with them. Zayden explains that having snakes on campus can be a wonderful experience. So there's, there's really a, a, a tremendous snake diversity on the Brownsville campus. It's really a special place. Dr. Zayden encourages students not to put their hands and feet where they cannot see them. He recommends that the university leave the existing wildlife as is. This is Jerry Galindo for UTRGV Radio News. Breast Cancer Awareness Month takes place across the nation. Samantha Garza tells us more. October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services website, one in eight women born today in the U.S. will get breast cancer at some point. Student Health Education Coordinator Cesar Quintanilla tells UTRGV Radio that although women have a higher risk, men should also learn how to screen their body. I think one of the biggest stigma that we all go through in our life is like, it's not going to happen to me. But it's also important for men to... to um, screen themselves and touch themselves under the breast area, under the arm area, because again, it can also affect males. The UTRGV community can visit the health services clinic to learn how to perform a self-screening. For more information about breast cancer awareness, visit cancer.org slash cancer slash breast dash cancer. For UTRGV Radio News, I'm Samantha Garza. A recent report reveals developments about registered voters across UTRGV. Samantha Garza reports. In four years, UTRGV student voter rate increased by over 26 percent, according to the National Study of Learning, Voting, and Engagement Report. The report compares the number of students that voted for the 2014 to the 2018 elections. In 2018, 11,500 students voted, in comparison to the 3,200 students who voted in the 2014 election. UTRGV's Director of Governmental Relations, Veronica de la Garza, explains the impact of the increase of student voters. Our students being able to 
might not only reach the national average but surpass it really shows a lot of um, wanting to kudos to all our students. It just shows kind of the involvement that our student is, you know, are having and both registering and getting involved and making sure they're voting. With this recognition of progress by Garza, students such as physics senior Cedar Garza tells UTRGV Radio the level of importance that voting has for her generation. I think it's important to use voting as a process for educating yourself about political de decisions that impact your day-to-day -day life. And, uh, you know, regardless of what your opinion on voting is, participating in the political process is an opportunity to do that for yourself. According to the MSLV campus report, the national student voting rate is 39.1 percent, while UTRGVs is 43.2 percent. De La Garza explains how transportation needs and college hunger is tied together with voting. There's all these issues that, you know, affect us on a day-to-day -day basis, so, and it's all associated and connected to voting and, po and politics. So, you know, making that correlation and making sure that young people and our faculty and our staff uh, go out and vote. Veronica De La Garza tells UTRGV Radio that she looks forward to the rise of student-registered voters across the RGV. This is Samantha Garza for UTRGV Radio News. This is your sports report. Over the weekend, 4 and 3 UTRGB men's soccer hosted 4 4 and 3 Western Athletic Conference opponent Grand Canyon University at the UTRGB Soccer and Track and Field Complex. Both teams played to a draw after 120 minutes of play. Yet the story of the game is the injury UTRGB senior and preseason WAC MVP Kyle Edwards suffered early in the first half. GCU head coach Shellis Hindeman explained the adjustment his team had to make after the Edwards injury. And if you notice, uh, we were attacking a lot on our left side. That was that was the adjustment that we had to make. Once he went out, uh, we had to first uh, evaluate who went in. And as the game went on, then we started giving giving our right side of fullback more an opportunity to go forward. Yet despite UTRGV losing its top goal scorer, UTRGV head coach Paul Lease was proud of his team's gritty performance after Edwards went out with injury. Certainly, when you have you know a senior forward who you know is as dangerous as Kyle and. Um, you know, not having him on the field for, for 90 minutes is always going to uh, gonna hurt. But we've got players to step in. They're all part of the squad. They work with each other week in, week out. So they know what they need to do. They know what their role is. And the guys who came in did a good job. UTRGV men's soccer's next two games will be on the road against 4-8-2 and two, California Baptist and 3-9 and nine, CSU Bakersville. Head coach Lee says the key for his team on the road trip will be recovery. The travel and the schedule at a Division One level is very demanding on these student athletes who obviously need to still keep up with their studies uh, at the same time. So the focus is on recovery. Um, you know, the boys have already, you know, trained hard and understand what they need to do. Now they need to make sure that they're mentally and physically in the best shape to do it. For more updates and highlights, visit GoUTRGV.com. For UTRGV Radio Sports, I'm Luis Rubio. Our very own Luis Rubio gives us a very special preseason report on UTRGV men's basketball. UTRGV men's basketball is back at practice and eager to get the 2019-2020 basketball season underway. UTRGV is coming off a successful 2018-2019 season, which included UTRGV's second postseason appearance and UTRGV's first postseason win. Coming into the season, UTRGV was voted to finish fourth in the preseason WAC coaches poll. Coach Hill gives his thoughts on the recognition. We, uh, we're improving, you know, so that's good. Um, we're getting better. The league is getting better, but we're getting better. We're getting better recruits, and we um, have leadership now. You know, we have a nice nucleus. So, But preseason is preseason. It's all about where you finish at the end. One of the returning leaders is reigning WAC Defensive Player of the Year, junior point guard Javon Levi. For the 2019-2020 season, Coach Hill wants to see Levi make improvements on the offensive end of the court. One of the average probably about 12 to 14 points a game, and but take good shots, you know, and raise, raise the level of his teammates up. Coming into the season, Coach Hill has a message for the students and the fans of UTRGV men's basketball. We want the same excitement at every one of our home games. Let's make this the best home court advantage in the WAC, in the country, and there's no reason that it shouldn't be, and there's no reason that it can't be.
UTRGV men's basketball's first game of the 2019-2020 season will be on the road against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State on Tuesday, November 5th. UTRGV men's basketball's first home game of the 2019-2020 season will be on Monday, November 11th at 7 p.m. versus the Howard Payne University Yellow Jackets at the UTRGV Fieldhouse. For UTRGV Radio Sports, I'm Luis Rubio. Now, this week's weather report. Hello, vaqueros. This is Hannah Lopez with your RGV weather. Following the tornado warnings from last night, expect mild and cloudy conditions today with highs reaching the low 90s and later tonight down to the low 70s. Similar conditions are expected until Wednesday. Later in the week, we are expecting thunderstorms by Thursday and Friday, followed by heavy rain. Expect to have a sunny and partly cloudy weekend. Here's what's going around campus. Tomorrow, there will be a pumpkin craving contest at the Edinburgh Student Union East Patio from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Students are encouraged to show their carving skills and enjoy this campus tradition. The winner of the contest will be rewarded V-Buck. For questions and more information, call the Student Union at 956-665-7989. The Arts Center located in Brownsville is hosting a Tempest Quartet in association to the International Admission Student Services School of Music. The Tempest Quartet is a group of performers from Tamaulipas in Mexico. This performance is taking place Thursday at 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Admission is free for all students. Contact the Arts Center in Brownsville at 956-295-3695 for more information. Students, there will be a meet and greet from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Wednesday at the Elabs Clark Art Gallery in Edinburgh. All students are welcome to attend and speak with English professors and majors about classes coming to UTRGV in spring 2020. There will be free food and drinks for all who attend. Call the Department of Literatures and Cultural Studies at 956-665-3421 for more information. The UTRGV Latino Theater Initiative is hosting the Little Big Top Circus of Illusions. General admission for the performance is $5 and is open to all that attend and is being hosted at the Albert Jeffers Theater. Call 956-665-3888 for more information. And that's all for this week's UTRGV Radio Newscast. If you have a story idea, idea contact us at radio at utrgv.edu. From all of us here at UTRGV Radio News, thank you for listening.